Hey everyone, I'm back back to work on the fair lane again. So I thought I'd make another quick video. I'm gonna get the throttle linkage and everything hooked back up again. Uh, appreciate all the interest in my last video that I put up. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of people really interested in this old hot rod. So thank you very much. It's always appreciated when people are interested in what you're interested in. So. Anyway, I thought while I was doing this, I'd give you a little background on the car. I bought this car in 2006, 2006. And I bought it with the intentions of well, just throwing a set of rims on it, cleaned up a little bit, and uh, just flip it. You know, make a little money on it. Car market was pretty hot back then so anyway bought it bought it home brought it home really really liked the little car uh and here we are all these years later bought in 2006 this is 2023 so you can do the math on that uh the car originally came with a 221 and a two-speed automatic. Uh, so, if you don't know anything about the 221, that was the original small block Ford. It was billed as the Challenger, or sometimes Fairlaner, depending. But in the literature from the time, it is billed as the Challenger V8. And if you didn't know it, the 62 Fairlane was honestly built around the engine that is the first car to have a small block Ford in it from the factory uh, as you see now we're up to an FE when I bought the car it had the 221 and two-speed Ford automatic and it was originally sand shell beige if you know anything about that color it's about as exciting as a well I would say it's about as un as exciting as an unbuttered baked potato. That is not an attractive color to me. If it's your car and you like it, knock yourself out. I don't think I've ever in my life heard anyone say, Man, I love that shade of beige. Not me, at least. So, one more bolt, or one more nut on this carburetor here. Let's get it out of here. Come on, baby. Turn for me. You know the good thing about recording this kind of stuff when you do it? At least for me, it cuts down on the profanity. There we go. Almost off of there. And in case you didn't know, the way Ford originally designed these things, the carburetors are sitting backwards. You notice the fuel inlets on the back side instead on this side and if you don't understand or know why that is the reasoning is simply this right here with these carburetors turned around and with your metering plate on here <clears throat> it won't clear the distributor so back in the 60s somebody said hey why don't we flip those around backwards so all dual carb Fords from the factory came with the carbs facing the back of the engine. So, anyway, let's pop this off here. This is your equalizer transfer. Uh, there we go. Come out there, baby. Move you back there. Get you up here. Sometimes this isn't the easiest thing to do. There we go. There we go. Goes right in there. And slide your carburetor back in place. Oops, oops, oops. Come on now. Work with me here. Anyway. When I bought this car, like I said, it had a 221 and a two-speed automatic. 
Uh, I drove it for about six months like that. And then I came across a very nice little five liter and a C4. So we threw that in there and made it a much more enjoyable car. Started doing a little bracket racing, having a little fun, and we all know how that progression goes. Honestly, drag racing, I love drag racing, but it's a terrible hobby, and I don't recommend it to a soul. If you like financial stability, stay away from drag racing. Get this back on here. So we ran it for a while with the with the uh, five liter and had fun and it was just a good little solid bracket car, nothing special. And uh, lo and behold, as these things go, somebody I knew was selling a 429. At the time, it was just a good deal, and I thought, hey, let's pick this thing up and squirrel it away. Well, of course, we all know how that goes. It wasn't long before it was, hey, let's put that big block in that fair lane. So, we, I bought the Kreitz instructions for cutting the shock towers, which, if you've never done that, it's not really that difficult to do. Uh, so we did that, we put the 429 in, the 429, once again, great bracket car, good engine, uh, nothing super fast, ran you know, mid sevens in the eighth mile on a normal basis. Uh, just an enjoyable car. If it, it was a great drive to the track, race it, drive home deal. Well, as fate would have it again, uh, I came across a great deal on a 521 stroker assembly. And if you know anything about big block Fords, 385 series motors, you can go all the way up to a 557 on just about any 460, 429 block. And of course, that's exactly what I did. Came across his stroker, came across a good set, good deal on a set of uh, Ford Motorsports Super Cobra Jet heads. Hey, next thing you know, we've got this big old stroker motor. Same thing. It was about 11 to 1 motor. Uh, it ran fantastic. Uh same thing. It was a pump gas deal. Uh, drive it to the track. Do stupid things. Drive it home. So, then I got involved with this Nostalgia Series. Well, they wouldn't allow the 385 Series engine. You know, we're doing this period correct thing. So, so that went away. I already had this an FE hanging around. Uh, was working on it and came across a good deal on a 427 block. It needed a lot of work, but the price was right. So, lo and behold, we're building a 427. Uh, built the 427, it never really always, it, it was one of those always had issues with it kind of things. I think there were some things wrong with it from the get-go. Uh, it was not long for this world, unfortunately. So, once it decided to uh, add a nice bay window in the side of the block, I decided, you know, we're not going to do any more expensive engines. We're going to go uh, as run-of-the-mill as we can. And now, we're still FE, but I use exclusively... Uh, readily available uh, D4 TE blocks, D3 TE blocks, uh, you know, the Mirror 105s, uh, you know, just readily available blocks that can be picked up in just about any kind of salvage yard. And, uh, and then I, you know, build what I build off of those, so... I love four-speed racing. There's nothing like it. And there's nothing like heads-up racing. Heads-up racing is is just incredible. It's so much fun. Uh, but there's a cost to it. 
unfortunately. And that cost is usually carnage. So, unless you're willing to spend a lot of money, you're probably not going to be overly successful, successful at it. Sorry. Okay. Those are hooked up. That's hooked up. I will adjust that out later. Let's get our rest of our linkage hooked up here. And how can you not like multiple carburetors? I mean, you know, yes, I know. I could get the same power out of a Dominator or even a good 4150, a good HP, you know, uh, 850 or something similar. But you just can't beat the look of dual carbs on anything. Hands down. Let's do this first. Get this linky chip back up here. Uh, come on, start on there. There we go. Almost there. So... Good to go. Looks like everything's hooked back up. Oh yeah. Get our return springs hooked back up. Ooh my. There we are. Okay. Well, I think that's got it done. And still gotta adjust that. That's no big deal. I've got a new, a new cable for that, but I'll get that done at a later date. I'll just keep messing with it for now. Yeah, racing season's coming, but it's still a ways away. So, let's see if she'll fire up. I think everything should be good to go now. I think everything's... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll bring you back when I'm ready to fire it up. Okay, we're back. Got our switch hooked up. And I was going to give you a quick shot of what this linkage looks like on the passenger side of the engine if you've never seen it before. And I'll show you how this all works here. It's a bell crank setup. There you go. See, look at that. Need to do a little adjustment on that if you've never seen it before. So let's give her a fire, her a shot, and fire up, see what it does. Okay, well, carburetors ran out of gas pretty quick, but thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. And if you like what I'm doing, let me know. Thanks and have a good day.